Welcome everyone, today I'm going to show you how to basically blend the animation of our character and grab his limbs while preserving the animation of whole body, his head, his body, like this. And also I will show you how to smoothly return your hand to your Moshi controller, as you can see now. You see my hand doesn't snap and it just smoothly returns to my Moshi controller. Also make sure you're subscribed and hit the like button because it really takes me a lot of nerves and efforts to make every video you see in this YouTube channel. And guys, I would greatly appreciate if you do a lot of activity under this video because I want YouTube to promote my video content so that more and more people could actually learn those cool tricks that you can use in your game. And also make sure you join my Discord channel and check out my Patreon because I have more about the guns where we actually make shotgun grenades and advanced damage system so if you're curious go check them out and will not take any more of our time so let's go straight to the explanations so first things first what i have i have a character and i imported it from third person character template that we have in our Unreal Engine. And I also created a blueprint with just a skeletal mesh inside, just the body. Also, I'm using the same animation blueprint from third person character. So this one, I didn't change any code. That's all we have. I just migrated it. And also what you need to make sure that in your mesh, you have a physics asset right here. So in case you don't have a physics asset assigned, you will locate your skeletal mesh like I do right now. You will right click, create physics asset, create. Just press OK and create a physics asset and you can import it inside your character. I mean inside your blueprint right here. Also, what you need to make sure is it's collision. So if you type collision here, you need to make sure that object type is physics body you can have any collision preset you want but make sure for now that it's physics body because the way our grab component works is that it traces for objects of type physics body that's why we need it so after we're done with this i want to give a big shout out to one of my subscribers who actually gave me the idea that we can use the physics handle instead of physics constraint that's what i had problems with so big shout out to him so i just mentioned our physics handle and that's the component we are going to add to our vr pawn so let's go to our vr pawn on add and here we'll type physics handle so basically physics handle is same as physics constraint but it works with bones so we can actually grab bones and as you can see it is not attached to anything so what is our logic our logic is that we want to attach the hand to the place where we grab and we want to grab this limp using our hand therefore we need to give our bp interactable actor information about our hand left or hand right, we need to give him information about physics handle and we need to give him information about our motion controller and also a bone we are hitting while of course grabbing. So all of this information we need to pass to our BP interactable actor. And the way we're actually going to do it is that let's go to our event graph and here locate your get grab component in your motion controller. So if you don't know how all of it works, make sure you watch the tutorial about VR template. I describe how all the processes work in there. So we basically sphere trace for objects of type physics body. And as a result, we have our head bone name. That's what we need because we, you know that when we grab, we have a sphere around our wrist that actually traces for objects. And also it gives us head bone name. Make sure you will not use bone name because it will not work. Make sure you use head bone name. So let's quickly promote it to a local variable because we don't need it as a regular variable. We just need access to this variable inside the function. That's it. So I will call it grabbed bone like this. We can put it on trip in here and connect it in here. Make sure it compiles. And afterwards, along with our nearest grab component, we'll return this variable. So I'll call it hit bone and I will return our grabbed bone right here. So we can hit compile and save, make sure it compiled perfectly. Afterwards, we can go back to our grab and we'll see hit bone appeared here. So now we need to work on our track grab. As I've said earlier, we need to pass physics handle, hand, motion controller and our bone so let's go to our track grab and in here let's add those three variables right here so i will add my hand mesh it's going to be hand mesh component so it's going to be skeletal mesh component like this i'm going to add physics handle like this so physics handle component and i will add bone name it's going to be of type name 
like this. So let's go to VR pawn. You will see those three inputs appeared here. So what we can do if it's our IA grab left means it's our left hand. So we have to get our hand left hand mesh. Physics handle is the same for both hands and bone name we pass from here. So I will align those variables like this. Afterwards, we do the same with our right hand. So we get our hand right physics handle and bone name. We also align those variables like this compile and save afterwards we go to try grab so now we have those variables only in grab component but we need to somehow give it to interactable actor and we'll create grab component here in a second but now what we need to do we need to also pass those variables to our event dispatcher that's how we are going to access those variables through bb interactable actor so i will click on ungrab and i will also add those three variables right in here so i will add my bone name then I will go ahead for my hand mesh. It's going to be our skeletal mesh component. And I'm going to add a physics handle. And it's going to be our physics handle component. Now we can pass those variables in here. So bone name, I'm going to have grabbed bone. Or what do we call it? It's bone name. So bone name. You don't have to necessarily grab the variable from here and go down below just put the input name in here, like, I mean, get the node, it's accessible. Afterwards, I will use my hand mesh, hand mesh, I'll plug it in here, and physics handle, I'll plug it in here. Also, I will make something like this, and like this. So now, we are done with our grab component, and basically it was our everything except for a character. Now let's go to our character. We need to add a grab component here, make sure it's child of our skeletal mesh, and make sure that in our interactable actor grab component, we'll set our grab type to custom. The reason we're doing this is that we don't want to use a free grab and snap grab. So we'll use custom functionality. So let's use custom. So afterwards, we have functions on grabbed and on dropped. Make sure you will use them. And as you can see here, we have access to all three variables. What is our logic? Once we grab our bone somewhere on the limb, we want to attach our hand right so we attach our hand and also we want to simulate physics on the part we have grabbed and all the bones underneath so basically if this is my elbow here this bone is a child of elbow so if i grab elbow i want all the children to be also grabbed so that's simulated physics so imagine i have animation right now like this i grab my limb and it disables physics and i can basically manipulate my limb the same with shoulders so if i have some animation right here I grab my shoulder and it instantly relaxes and I can now grab it with the hand. So that's what we are going to do. In order to do this, we have a great component that I've recently discovered and it's called physical animation. So physical animation. This component allows us to make animations, I mean custom animations for our body ignoring the main animation that is set through animation blueprints. So if you have any kind of other animation in your body, you can set custom movement to a body part. So in here, first thing I'm going to do, and it's going to be on our event begin play, we need to set skeletal mesh component because we need to allow our physical animation know which skeletal mesh we're working with. So I'm going to do something like that. And in here. Afterwards, I'm going to show you the variables you can adjust, the stiffness of how hard you can grab. And now what I'm going to show you, I'm going to get my physical animation and apply physical animation settings below. So those ones. And in here, we'll use the pelvis bone. I will tell you why in a second. So we'll type pelvis here. And in here, we'll drag this pin, make physical animation data. So what is this? As you know, in our skeleton, let's go and discover it. Let's go and see. We have our pelvis, and pelvis is parent of all the bones, as we can see here. So what does this node do? It basically applies physical animation data, which you can see here, orientation strengths, angular velocity strengths, and etc. So those variables are basically responsible for stiffness of your physical animation, and basically how hard it will be for you to grab someone's limb. So if you want this limb to be stiff, to be rough, and to be hard to be grabbed, then you should put high values in here. So I will put around 1000 in here, and your velocity maybe 100. In here I will put 100, and in here I will put 100. Those four variables you can touch. Those two you will not need, or you can play with them and see what they do. Basically, the bigger number you set up here, the more resistant the limp you grab 
will be. So that's what it means. Okay, so with event begin play, we're done. So now we move to on grab. So as I've recently said, we want to attach our hand to the bone we grab so that our hand was not anywhere in the air. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to promote all of those variables, but I already have them. So I'm going to do something like this right away. So grab the bone, I will have my hand mesh and I'll have my physics handle. So if you don't know how to promote those variables, you can just drag from here and type promote to a variable. So in here you'll promote to a variable. So I will align those nodes like this. So what I'm going to do before I grab, I want to get my hand mesh and get relative transform because I want to save the data about how our hand is located relative to our motion controller before we grab. Because after we grab, our hand detaches and it has no longer data about motion controller. So I will get relative transform, I will promote it to a variable and I will call it relative hand location before grab like this. After we have saved it, we can now detach the hand. So I will get my hand mesh, attach component to component. Our parent will be our skeletal mesh and make sure in here you will use your grabbed bone. And if you don't put your grabbed bone here, it will not work. And make sure your rules are keep world. Okay, now we can hit compile and save. Afterwards, what we have to do? We need to check if our grabbed bone does not equal to pelvis. As I've recently said, we are going to apply physics, I mean make ragdoll on the body parts we grab and its children. So basically if our body part we grab equals to pelvis, what is going to happen is that we're going to grab the whole body since our pelvis is the parent of all the bones we have here. If you want this, you can do it, but I'm not doing it for my tutorial because I want it to be realistic. So I'm checking if it's not pelvis, I do an if statement right here and on true I create a sequence because we'll have some code in here. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get my skeletal mesh and I'm going to set all bodies below simulate physics. And this node will get the bone we hit so we can get our grabbed bone. We can pass it through here and make sure we'll do simulate. So basically the bone we grab and all its children will now simulate the physics. So now the hand will be relaxed. Afterwards, we need to do one additional step. We need to set all bodies below physics blend weight. So what it means, the blend weight means if you follow the animation or no. So if the value is zero, your limb follows the animation that your whole body does. But if this value becomes one, that's what we need. This bone and its children will not follow the animation. So 100% of not following the animation. If you put 0 0.5, it will half follow the animation, half not follow the animation. But we need here one, make sure you have one. So afterwards, since we have our physics handle right here, it has a specific function, grab component at location. So now we can pass our component, it's our skeletal mesh, and bone name is our grabbed bone and grab location will use our motion controller so let's get motion controller get world location why are we using motion controller the reason is really simple our motion controller now is the only part that follows your real world motion controller because hand is now detached from motion controller it's attached to skeletal mesh so we use motion controller in here and now what do we have to do the difference between physics handle and physics constraint is that in physics handle we have to specifically set its location because in vr pawn our physics handle, as you can see, it's not attached to anything. It's not following any position we have right here. It's not following our hand. So once we grab something, we need to make sure that our physics handle is actually on the spot on our hand so that when we grab it, the component we grab followed our physics handle. So that's why in here in our interactable actor, I will go ahead and set timer by event and I will promote this timer to a variable so that we could reference it later on. In here, I will do it every 0.01 second and make sure you will enable looping. That's essential. After our looping is enabled, we'll create a custom event and we'll call it make physics handle follow motion controller like this. And in here, all we got to do is that we're going to get our physics handle. You can do it from here, but I will copy this variable. I will set target location and my target location will be the location from here. 
So I will do something like this. Hit compile and save. So now once we release our hand, we want to get our hand back to our motion controller. And I want to show you a really cool trick. So what we are going to do? You remember, we have saved relative transform of our hand. So first thing we're going to do, we are of course going to stop our timer. We are no longer grabbing. So invalidate timer by handle. And make sure you use this function clear and invalidate timer by handle. Afterwards, we are getting our hand mesh we are going to attach component to component and we basically attach our hand mesh back to our motion controller exactly like this so our socket name we don't use it we just keep world so now our hand is detached from our body but it's not in the right position our motion controller and there is a really cool function in unreal engine move component too. So basically what it will do, it will move our hand in a relative location and rotation throughout some time and it will be smooth. If you don't want a smooth movement, you can just directly set relative transform, but I'm going to show you this node. I'm going to show you how to do it with smoothness. So we'll use this function, we'll get our variable we have saved up before. So I'm going to split it and I'm going to use location and rotation and i want to return my hand in 0.2 seconds so we can do something like this and we can do for shortest rotation paths but what i want to do actually you know that this function takes 0.2 seconds so after it's completed what i want to do i want to get my physics handle and i'm going to release component since we are no longer holding our body and then i want the grabbed part since once we release the grabbed part is not following its animation so i want to make this grabbed part smoothly returning to where it is supposed to be so what i'm going to do i'm going to add timeline and i'm going to call it return limp smoothly and make sure you'll plug this in play from start that's essential it will not work otherwise so let's say i want to return the limp in 0.2 seconds I'm going to add a flow track, I will call it blend, and in here I will add value 1 times 0, and time 0 0.2, and value 0. So you know, when our blend is 0, it means our hand will follow the animation completely. So on update, I will get my grab bone, I will get my skeletal mesh, I will set all bodies below physics blend weight, this node right here, I will connect the grab bone and connect the blend in here. After it's finished, all I need to do is to set all bodies below, simulate physics and make sure it's set to false. Like this. So we can hit compile and save. Now let's go ahead and test it. I can grab the hand and it works perfectly. So our body follows the animation. I can grab the limb and our hand returns smoothly to our position. But the downside of this smooth hand return is that you can see our limb stays on the same place for some time. So if you want to fix it, what we can do, we can create a little trick that will allow us to do this. So you can use a sequence here and just disconnect this code we have right here and put it in the sequence. That will make sure that this line and this line will be executed at the same time so that this line didn't start after this move component to end it working. If you don't like this smooth snapping, what you can do is that instead of move component 2, you can go ahead and straight away take your hand mesh and you can set relative transform to this variable. It will not be smooth, it will be snappy. So if you like snappy, go ahead for it. And don't forget to like this video and I will see you in the next tutorial and I wish you a good day.